and welcome. Our meeting will now be held in this room. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance.
declare you to be appointed. Congratulations. I'd like to offer my congratulations to all the recently elected trustees, Robert Colabrook, John Delaney, Colleen Foley, and Louis Menudo. And I would also like to offer my congratulations to all of the recently, uh, to our continuing trustees, Brian Dorney, Mark Hire, and Steve Macrinos. And then there's me, the mayor. At this time, I look forward to continuing our work together on this board. We will continue with the organization of the gentlemen. We will be making a series of appointments and asking for the board for various motions. I now make the following appointments as mayor. Deputy Mayor, Robert A. Bull. Environmental Advisory Board Chairperson, Stephen S. Macrinos. The Library, Colin E. Foley. Public Works, Mark A. Heyer. The Zoning Change Review Committee, Louis Lindo, who is the chair. John Delaney, H. Bradford Gustafson, Cosmo Veneziani, and John Milanello. I'd like to appoint uh, an advisory committee, a civic beautification committee. Patricia Styler, Chair. Maureen Lyons, Chief uh, Member. Althea Robinson, Kathleen Wall. Now I will return to appointments by the Mayor for people who are subject to the Board of Trustee approval. I will now read the following appointments and ask for a motion to approve at the end. The Board of Police Commissioners, Mark A. Hyer. Also, Ralph Swazi and Kenneth Jackson. The Traffic Commission, Louis M. Menudo is the chair. John Delaney, Stephen Macrinos, Colleen Foley are supporting. Kenneth O. Jackson and Joseph D. San Francisco are always members. The Finance and Audit Committee, Robert Goldberg, Chair, John Delaney, Colleen Foley. The Committee to Fill Vacancies on Boards and Commissions, Teresa Trouve is the Chair, and she is joined by Mark Hyer. The Legal Committee, Brian Dorney and John Delaney. Public Information Committee, and that includes Village Press Releases, and statements. Robert Bullerbrook, Colleen Foley, and Stephen Macrinos as the chair. Designation of official newspapers. The Garden City News, Garden City Life. The Planning Commission, H. Bradford Gustafson, Scott Brandewitty, Gregory E. Senkin is the alternate member. And their terms will expire in April of 2023. The Environmental Advisory Board, Lawrence Quinn, Evelyn Fasano, terms to expire April 24. Architectural Design Review Board, Review Board Donald Hickey, Rosario Polanti, and then we also designate Donald Hickey Jr. as chairperson. Terms to expire April 2023. 20, Board of Commissioners of Cultural and Recreational Affairs. Timothy Stapleford, Christina Russo. Terms to expire April of 24. Can I ask for a motion to approve the foregoing? Deputy Mayor Bolivar and second. Mr. Trustee Macrinos. All in favor? That will 
motion carried 8 0. Then we will move on to appointments by the Board of Trustees only. Long Island Railroad Third Track Committee, the chair is Brian Doyle. Joined by Stephen Macrinos and Joseph DeFrancisco. Board of Ethics, Richard B. Silver is the chair, Alan Mathers and Valerie Rothschild. Board of Appeals, James Van Joyen, term to expire April of 2025. Designation. Designation of Banking Depositories, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, T.D. Bank, Capital One, and People's United Bank. And may I request a motion to approve the foregoing? Trustee Hire. And a second? Deputy Mayor Bolero. And all of those in favor? And that motion carried. At this time, we will move on uh, with a regular agenda. And we will move to comments by the department heads, the village administrator. Uh, so we will begin then with uh, Commissioner Jackson, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I
Yeah, just like the uh, chief said, uh, this necessity to sign this agreement uh, is a result of a tragedy in 2014. Uh, New York State. I don't think you're like Yeah, put your microphone on.
Um, item number 10, the water bins. Uh, we uh, had to bid out our recycling services. Uh, we only received one bid, and we are going to reject that only uh, one bidder. Due to a, uh, a non-compliant bid.
about $700,000 in the 1920 fiscal year. So in the last quarter of the year, um, there were, you know, uh, cancellation of recreation programs, um, cancellation of rental of facilities and fields, um, as well as um, less court fees, from less tickets that were issued, um, also less public work services. Um, so in sidewalk, work that was scheduled to be done was deferred, and so those reimbursements did not come in, as well as uh, there was less uh, commercial sanitation that was picked up during this period of time. Um, on the flip side, the village also saw about $600,000 of favorable variances due to uh, unanticipated revenues. Um, some of these were from forfeiture deposits, um, premium on securities, when we went out to bond, as well as um, uh, additional state aid that was received that was not anticipated. In the enterprise funds, um, we see the pool revenues were came in slightly below budget, about $18,000. These are the revenues that were received in the prior year, so these are 20, summer of 2019 revenues. The tennis fund, um, due to the closure of the, the tennis bubble, saw a loss of revenues of about $104,000. Since that's the, you know, where the revenues for the tennis bubble comes from is from 100% from the facility itself and the programs um, that, are, that occur there, you know, that the tennis fund took a big hit on, on the revenue side. Mrs. Lusar, did you have a question with regard to the public works, the $3 million? Does that mean that you said commercial, uh, uh, commercial garbage pickup? The three million dollars, uh, no, so that's mainly due to the two uh, capital projects that were deferred. They were anticipated to start in the 1920 fiscal year, but were deferred. One of the projects is the project that's ongoing now, the Nassau Boulevard train station project, and the second project is the business district paving. Okay, and then some of the losses there also is the commercial sanitation, but that was about $48,000. The Water Enterprise Fund uh, saw, was, uh, saw a decrease in the budget of about $483,000. That's mostly due to uh, lower consumption year over year, about 3%, uh, slightly offset by uh, the increase in the water rate. On the expenditure side, the, the General Fund um, has $60.6 million of expenditures. Um, and again, compared to the revenues received of 60.8, you know, the, the village received revenues that exceeded the expenditures for the year. The planned expenditures were 67 million. So the village saw a lot of decreases in revenues. Some of these were due to COVID. The vast majority of these uh, savings were from open positions that were unfilled, um, retirements that were not anticipated, weren't subsequently filled uh, immediately. Um, we had less overtime, less part-time help um, from programs. They need to hire part-timers as much. Um, so, and the subsequent benefits and taxes related to those positions, so that amounted to about $2.3 million of savings. The village also had many other different expenditures, um, some of it related to COVID. Close yet close the closure of the facilities, there were you know, less programs and um, activities that were occurring, so the village incurred less expenses, less contractual services, less materials and supplies. Um, so that amounted to about $800,000. There were less legal fees, about $400,000, less judgments and claims, of about $2 million. Under the enterprise funds, um, the they also saw overall reduction in expenses due to COVID. Um, and the water fund also had open positions, so they had a lot of favorable variances there as well. Um, of all the funds, the tennis fund is the only one where 
cancellation of programs, cancellation of special events, parades, charity runs, you know, that were scheduled for the spring. Um, so that caused uh, some re uh, reduction in overtime for the village. For the first quarter of the 1920 fiscal year, so for the months of June, July, and August, um, in the building department, they have received about $1.9 million of permit fees that were not budgeted. This is for the building that uh, was formerly occupied by Sears. So those unbudgeted revenues will help offset some of the losses due to COVID um, for the rest of the, for the village. As we continue to see um, losses in the police and court um, uh, area due to decreased number of tickets that are issued, as well as in the recreation department for the summer programs that were canceled. So we're seeing about, combined in those two areas, about a $400,000 loss for the first quarter of the year. Under the enterprise funds, so these revenues for the pool are for the current summer, the, this past summer. Um, the enterprise, the pool fund actually received $354,000 of pool revenues. The 654 year to date number includes $300,000 that was budgeted transfer from the general fund. So, off of the, the budget, the anticipated budget for the pool was $1.3 million. So only 354,000 was received. So the pool is seeing uh, close to one million dollar loss in, in revenues this year. The tennis fund um, continued to have a, a closure until it opened um, sometime in the week of uh, July 12th. Um, they are anticipating that the programs will start up again next week. Um, so they're anticipating that the rest of the, the year will most likely ramp up in revenues, but for the first quarter of the year, there's approximately a $65,000 loss of revenues. The water fund uh, continues to be on target to their budget. Looking at the expenditures for the first quarter of the year, um, we've included uh, the village continues to incur expenses related to COVID. Um, you know, some cleaning, PPEs, uh, materials, um, as well as some overtime for the outdoor dining events. The total estimated cost due to COVID um, since the pandemic started are about $350,000. And that continues through October 4th, which is the deadline for FEMA related costs. So the village is continuing to work with FEMA as well as with Nassau County to seek reimbursement through the CARES Act. Um, so we're you know, gathering uh, documentation to provide that information to them. The village also incurred unexpected costs due to tropical storm Isaias, and that's estimated to be about 1.4 million between the tree removals, the stump grinding of removal, miscellaneous debris removal, um, curbs and sidewalks that were damaged, so the repairs for that, as well as for overtime, um, those costs are pretty significant. We are, the, this tropical storm was declared an emergency, so we are working with FEMA, again, to uh, provide documentation for reimbursements. So we initially uh, submitted, uh, began submitting reimbursements through FEMA directly. We submitted about $40,000 to them, and they only reimbursed 75% of the expenditures. Um, subsequent to that, we um, reached out to Nassau County under the CARES Act. They are reimbursing, or they're anticipating to reimburse the village 100% for those expenses. So we're, you know, just going through Nassau County on that. So for uh, the tropical storm, that would be again FEMA, so that would be you know, 75% reimbursement on those expenses. Um, so, you know, when we get 
get reimbursed on these expenses is unknown at the time. You know, it's a long process. Uh, they require a lot of documentation. They spend a few months reviewing it, you know, before they submit reimbursement. So we're hoping to get reimbursements before the end of this fiscal year. Um, in the meantime, in order to cover some of these expenditures, we've been um, looking at transferring funding from open positions that have not been filled, um, part-time help, budgets that, you know, for part-timers that have not been filled as well, as well as through contingency. The enterprise funds are also seeing, uh, the pool and tenants are seeing slight uh, reductions in their expenses as well. And then the overtime report for the first quarter of the year. So we are seeing that um, the overtime um, year over year has we're seeing an increase. Um, if you look at the month of March, uh, that's a significant amount, two hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars, and that includes the overtime that was incurred due to the tropical storm Isaias. That amounted to about one hundred and four thousand for that emergency. Um, overtime also is, uh, is included there for the 7th Street uh, outdoor dining. And that so far is about $40,000 for the quarter. Any questions? Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to draw the board's attention to items three C and I'm, I'm sorry, C three E and three F. Three E is for the uh, recreation department. As you may recall, a uh, year or so ago we, we upgraded field two to a synthetic turf infield to major overhaul facility. The engineering company did also the project. Uh, sent us a bill about three weeks ago, a bill that was not paid for $6,125. The project has, was closed, so we have to transfer to pay this invoice. And item seven is $8,700 to fund the wiring in the boardroom. As you know, the boardroom was built with the Village Hall in 1953, and the only modern amenity in there is electricity. We're now wiring it for data ports for a digital phone, for network access, and power for the new digital display that should be updated by the next meeting we have in that room. Those are my two items.
questionnaire that was submitted, that was provided, included 34 questions related to contract requirements, the organization's background, history, fees, and expenses. The RFP was published in both of the official newspapers as well as put online. When the respondents, the respondents, I prepared an analysis based on the responses that we received, and based on that analysis and review, and we're recommending and requesting that the board approves the engagement of the medical services of Northwell Health Occupational Environmental Medicine in New York on an as needed basis for an initial period of two years, subject to the review as to form by Village Council. Obviously, I'm in favor of this uh, proposal. I 
just want to explain that the chamber, due to the COVID uh, pandemic, had no opportunity really to run the Eastern uh, anti Parade, Pineapple Bowl, Belmont Festival, Promenade also. Our income revenues are down 80%, and we're just looking for a little relief from, from the village on that. On item 15, uh, we would like to ask the board to extend the uh, outside dining until at least the end of the year, if not more. Uh, at the moment, just so everyone's aware, on the 7th Street Travel, Liberty Travel, the Old Gross Jewelers, New York Sports Club, Asian Loom, Perennial, HSBC, Pair 3, iFixit, and Go Greek, and then, of course, Lord and Taylor are all going to be gone from the village. A shame. Third, the the Seventh Street Travel in that location for 33 years. Uh, so, at, at the end, the foresight of the board to have approved the enhanced outdoor dining uh, back when it was first approved has been a saving grace for the restaurants in town. So, uh, as the winter months come, and I'm sure you, you see the papers and you, you see TV, it is a struggle for restaurants all over, all over the state of New York. And, and we're no different. Uh, so I would ask that, if possible, we extend the outdoor dining. Uh, a lot of the restaurants are, are looking to try and get through the rest of the year. And uh, so I'd like to ask that. Uh, Although, uh, we will not need it on Sundays on uh, 7th Street, but just on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday rather than four days. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yeah. Take a table of eight, and it 
it's in its own enclosure. Um, everybody's investigating all different kinds of things. I know the heaters are becoming hard to come by because everybody on Long Island that's a restaurant is, you know, trying to buy them. Uh, but I think if if we can, if we're going to help save some of these restaurants, we've got to give them the opportunity. It's really worth it.
if we want to try to hold this event, you know, like I said, who's paying the bank for the police, who's paying for the DPW, who's paying for the overtime, what type of liability coverage insurance that we have. This is, you know, something that, again, it sounds like a nice idea, but this is not 26 cars pulling up and just going to sit in front of a screen. That's not what they're laying out. So I'm just saying, I, I, I think that we need to have more, at least for me, I don't know about my support, but I need to have more information before I can approve something. Deputy Mayor Holbrook, uh, just to follow up on a point you made on the extension of the outdoor dining program, things such as the tents would still qualify as temporary structures under our building code, and the building department would have to have learned where precisely that was going to go, and in compliance with fire marshal regulations, how the exits are set up, things of that nature. I would defer to Giuseppe, but he's signaling yes, I'm correct. So the details of the layout of the tent and the scope of how many people will accommodate would all be part of the restaurant's requirement to comply with all other laws. And, and uh, the, the restaurants are perfectly aware of that, so they know that. Thank you very much. Congratulations to the trustees of the Galilee. Thank you. 
20. And I have a motion to move that. <laughs> Trustee Hunter, any second? Trustee Foley, all those in favor? All right. And so that motion passed 7 0.
May I, may I, from council, uh, may I respectfully request that whether, if the motion looks like we're going to go forward to pass it, that rather than it be a waiver of the fee, that the board authorizes an amendment to the license agreement to provide for a reduction of, you know, to zero for those three months. And that will authorize me to enter into a revised license agreement rather than arguably a gift of public funds. Trustees Delaney and Donia, we cannot observe. Are you opposed or in favor of the motion? Favor. Favor. There are four votes in favor of the motion and four votes opposed to the motion. I believe it's a 4-4 four, four vote, which leaves the mayor to make the tie-breaking vote. Yeah, I think that we're going to vote to oppose it. So the record is clear, voting in favor of the motion for the trustees Foley, Trustee Menudo, Trustee Delaney, and Trustee Dorney, the remainder of the trustees opposed, and the mayor casting the tie-breaking vote. The motion fails. Meaning that the, red, the license fee must be paid on time and in full. Thank you. 
privilege of her by having the outdoor movie. Honorable Mayor Trevay, 
I do not believe you are a racist. And to the trustees, I do not believe any of you are racists. Yet this action of the Indian Consortium bears what Judge Scott deemed a, quote, race-based animus. Someone can take racist action without being personally bigoted themselves. I give the Board of Trustees that benefit of the doubt. Intentional or not, this decision follows in segregationist footsteps of Robert Moses, A.T. Stewart, and William Levitt. I ask that the Board place a vote to re-enter the consortium at its first available opportunity on an agenda for a future Board of Trustee meeting. Is this something that the Board will do? As many
or I can say. Um, but again, kind of what's the, how do we make things happen? How do we like actually have a date and a time and a attendee list and what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? Like, did, did you guys, did like Rod and Clay and those guys, Thomas also get an invite for the meeting from you guys? Because when we invited them, it was that kind of one. Sidewalks, how many roots they cut from the trees, 
and maybe the trees should be taken down rather than cutting all the roots. If you look at the trees, that, some of the trees that came down in this last storm, and not by any means all of them, but on Pine Street that the sidewalks and streets were just done, trees fell and sidewalks weren't down so all because all the roots had been removed. And uh, on the corner of Washington and Chestnut, because they repaved Chestnut, most all the trees fell to the north. This one fell right across Washington because they had done the sidewalks on Washington. This was a corner house for Chestnut. And there were no roots there. They remove all the roots, they do the sidewalks and herbs, and there's nothing holding the tree in the ground. So I had the same thing at my house. They took all the roots out. And when Irene came through six, six years ago or so, we had to have the tree taken down because it was just teetering. Nothing was holding it on one side. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else?
fire at the end of the year. Uh, HVAC systems can be made uh, better to protect against COVID and other health uh, problems. And I think we should try to get some of these funds to those three systems that we are going to be doing very soon. So I would suggest that we make a formal request. Uh, I don't know what the number is that we're going to throw out two and a half million dollars. Uh, let's see where that ends up. To me, there's no harm in asking. So we'll cross this up, Joe. Yeah. Find out if there's a process for I think I think we all like free money, so I don't know that we're gonna get a lot of position on this one. Three is I'm just kidding. Um, can I ask you about the dump? So basically the idea of having stickers or having some way of identifying uh, someone a resident to to Ryan's point before. Yeah, it's just we don't have a really good system of identifying vehicles, stickers get given to somebody else. Um, I mean, we should just we make it good for three years, we make it colorful. The first year, they're purple. The second year, they're effective like three years, we need them. And it hasn't been changed in how long? 30 years? More. So we have no way of, I don't know about you guys, but I've got to the dump. You know there's people with commercials who are using it. People who don't even have stickers. At least we have a field, it's not foolproof, but it's a little better system of tracking. It's not about the money, it's 15 bucks. I'm not proposed to change that. I just think we need a system where we can track things and keep track of who's got that and what vehicle is attached to that. So the fee is not, you can also look at the fee of the stickers.